Hey y'all, welcome to Parker's Reef. On today's episode, we're gonna check out an awesome store that is very well known for having the rarest of freshwater items in stock, but now has the first of its kind marine fish in store, and we're gonna go check it out first. All right, thank you for joining me on another episode of Parker's Reefs. And as briefly touched on in the intro, today we are headed up to sunny Queensland, Brisbane in fact, to see Finn and Marina at Atlas Aquariums. Now, if you've heard of Atlas Aquariums before, it is potentially because of some of the crazy cool freshwater displays they have there and some of the most uber rare freshwater fish you will find in this country. Now, I'm super excited to tell you that they have an uber rare marine Marine fish in. in fact, they've got a few of them in just to make things super, super exciting. So I figured I would jump on a plane, head on up, up to the beautiful sunny weather in Queensland, do a tour of all things in Finn's store, because to be honest, even old salty reefer like myself really enjoyed seeing some of the crazy cool freshwater stuff they have in stock and also just getting the feel of the enthusiasm and energy that both Finn and his partner Marina have in store is just truly, uh, it's contagious. So I was excited about the freshwater items. And then we head into the marine room near the end of this video where you will see a super, super special collection of marine fish. So uh, please do stay tuned for that. It's probably no more need for a uh, preview or intro than that. I think we just let Finn do the talking and let's roll the footage. Finn. All right. Uh... Welcome to Atlas Aquarium, um, specialists in uh, freshwater and marine. Uh, come on in. Let's do it. <laughs> well, man, we should start with, um, yeah, this, I mean, this it tank is. has been featured on a couple of other videos, but I mean, it would be remiss not to cover it because it's such an iconic piece of Atlas Aquarium. And I mean, probably two aquariums in Australia, really. I haven't seen anything like this anywhere else, so. Yeah, I would hope not. I think that, <laughs> it's pretty I think unique. that was the purpose, yeah. Tell us about this, what, um, what, what do you affectionately call this, a river tank? We or? call this the river tank. Yeah, yeah. Um, basically a simulation of a natural river, uh, yep. supposedly a chunk of river pulled out of nature and just slapped into a glass box. Um, super, super cool. The, What's the dimensions on this bad boy? The dimensions of this are it's 12 foot long, 4 foot wide, and one and a half foot tall. And um, we, we were talking about this before, <laughs> and I, I thought it was just that my glasses needed adjusting. Because yeah. I, I was looking down the side of the tank like this, and looking at the angles, and I'm like, it's it's not square. No, it, it's... <laughs> It's at an angle, so so down the bottom it's about 150 mil lower than at the top. Um, that just helps with the sort of natural water flow. Natural flow, downhill. yeah, yeah. Um, but the pumps are very strong. It's running off uh, six, 13,000 liter an hour yep. flavor pumps yep. now. Um, I mean, people that watch this channel that um, follow with a marine backing will, will be well familiar with closed loop yes. pumps. Um, yes. which generate flow and this literally is a freshwater closed loop where you've got your intakes up this end mm -hmm. it's pulling the water out of there and literally releasing it up the other end here for this crazy high flow river setup and you've got some i mean there's obviously some cool plants in here but uh there yeah. is so the, the plants are obviously what you see first um the the full tank design was originally done to basically simulated a habitat for hillstream loaches or Sewellia. Okay. Um, they're a species of loach that lives in really high flow areas in the wild. Um, and they sort of, they eat that biofilm that lives on rocks. And so they, their body yeah, right. is completely suited to suctioning just onto to, a rock. Yeah, um, just which makes them very hard to catch out of the tank when they're <laughs> You can spot them, the but you can't remove them. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Uh, we put about 120 in here originally, yep. um, and they're breeding crazy. Awesome. Uh, so I would imagine there's somewhere around 200 in here now. Crazy. Um, and I mean, for a freshwater noob like myself, mm. they're a pretty exotic freshwater fish. Yeah, they are. They're yeah. not like your neon tetras. These are no. these are something you <laughs> yeah. know, that there's almost makes special. you twizzle that mustache a little bit. They're, they're, <laughs> <laughs> they're a nice um, fish. They are, they are, they're very nice. So I've, I've had a bit of a fascination with them for a long time. Sure. Um, they're like almost like a mini stingray that yeah, just yeah. 
I don't know, they've got a lot of personality. Awesome. Um, I was yeah. going to say, I'm here all day, so you can be sure I'll be out here with my uh, top down lens, <laughs> getting some macro shots of yeah, yeah, some yeah. of the cool, cool things living inside this tank. Because there's, there's a heap of stuff in here. There's, there's catfish, there's loaches, there's Siamese algae, there's a shrimp, yeah, there's right, right. snails, like all sorts. Basically, anything that can do well in here that's not predatory, we've <laughs> added. Um, we do like the, the fry survival rate to be quite Yeah, high. well, I mean, you were talking about some of the fish that are in here. Uh, retailing at you know fifty dollars plus a pop yeah, yeah. um so you don't want something in there you know eating a thousand bucks worth of food a day <laughs> yeah yeah exactly <laughs> i imagine exactly. the power bill alone running this kind of flow um and this lighting what kind of lighting is it by these the way these are chihiros so there's a chihiros standard um wrgb yeah wow. um, we sell a lot of chihiros lighting yep. i really rate it right they're um, a very sexy looking fixture for fresh water they're yeah. really really nice yeah um, really, they really do nice. also do a marine light too. i do know yeah yeah, yeah. i'm um, good friends with the australian distributors so yeah yeah there you go <laughs> big there shout out go. to oz aquariums there for bringing yeah, yeah, Cheerios yeah. in nice work no great lights um all fully like app controllable yeah. so this whole thing's sort of pretty self-running, I guess. We they get the results, yeah. Yeah, we water change it every couple of weeks. Okay. And that's about it. Really? Um, so there's no it fertilizers, no CO2, nothing I, like that in this? I fertilize it when I remember to fertilize okay. it. Uh, <laughs> I used to try and do it a few times a week, but now it's probably more like oh, once a month, twice yeah, a month. Okay, okay. So I don't know if that has much uh, real meaning to it, but sure. you know, I do it anyway. Um, so you're a true uh, hobbyist storekeeper you're just like us a little bit uh lack sometimes on uh the instructions you'll you'll <laughs> put the fertilizer in now and then with things i've got a, a lot of off. things to remember <laughs> <laughs> i'm not good at writing stuff down <laughs> but i mean that comes from your background i mean this this store or the atlas aquarium has been around mm. for like 40 plus years yeah yeah it's it's I've actually been trying to track it back and I, I've got a few names of people that I think started it and I yeah, need wow. to sort of trace that a little bit, but there's been a lot of different owners. Yep. Um, and from what I hear, I think it's been running from the seventies sometime. Crazy. Um, they're always doing marine and always doing fresh. Yep. yep. Um, so I, yeah, obviously we continue with continue, what's been happening for that long. Continue the theme and like you come into it as a, uh, you had many years as a freshwater expert, hmm. ran a, uh, a uh, uh, successful online store, online store yeah. for freshwater fish. And yeah. then you worked here for the previous owner, is that I did, correct? I did. I wasn't working here for long. I, I was working here for a few months with okay. Sebastian, who was the previous owner. Um, I was trying to actually open my own store and Sebastian You're in here just getting, happened getting to ideas and tips and- uh, Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. It was really helpful. And Sebastian did mentor me to a point and nice. helped me with a lot of stuff. Um, and then he sort of was in a position where he wanted to move out of the industry. And so I took that as an opportunity to awesome. purchase Atlas Aquarium. And then before you know it, you've gone from a, an online store to a bricks and mortar store <laughs> with the ability to have awesome displays like this <laughs> yeah. and having to then dip your toes into the salty side of things. Yeah, which, which I had only ever done once before. Um, and it was a complete failure. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we're doing a lot better in here, and I, I have two staff members that are really knowledgeable yeah, awesome. in marine, which they, they help me a lot. There's so many people out there that have a similar sort of background yourself. I mean, apart from buying a local fish store, mm. but, but have um, an interest or have many years experience in freshwater and always been you know, a little curious on the other side of the hobby, mm. the dark side, the, um, <laughs> the salty side with the, the marine side, side of things. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, your, uh, your, your position, your, your story, your history is pretty familiar to a lot of viewers yeah. out there. So definitely uh, we'll get to the marine side soon, but, um, yeah, we've got to just take in this, this tank cause it's, um, it's something pretty special and there's no sump on anything like this. It's just literally the, the closed loops and... It, it does have a sand filter under it. Okay, so yeah. One of the pumps runs through a sand filter yes. and actually a chiller because we find with just that little bit of extra heat that the pumps produce yeah. and because there's six of them um, in summer, last year with our previous pumps, our J-Bow pumps, they got very hot. And yep. so it tended to be running at about 30 to 32 Ooh. degrees. Um, the fish don't seem to mind when you've got so much oxygenation, but the plants don't like that. Yeah, that of level course. Of yeah, yeah. So over winter, they've had like a complete growth, but everything is <laughs> just huge. chilled off a little bit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, it's 
desperately due for a trim, honestly. <laughs> it's <been laughs> no, wild. It looks incredible, and I mean, I love the way that I, I'm literally standing at the front door now. You walk in and see this one of a kind yeah. river tank, which is su super cool. And 12 by 4, did you say? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a beast. It's basically as big as we could fit in this area. Um, <laughs> I did want to go 14 foot. Um, <laughs> but I couldn't easily get the glass. So. <laughs> no, fair enough. 12's got more than enough presence. Really cool to see. Thank Definitely. you. Now, I mean, as amazing as this display tank is, you've got a lot more to show us. You do. Take us through the rest of your shop. What else can we see? So right here, we've got a Cade. Yeah, um, nice. This is the, the Cade Reef S2. Um, Beautiful. This will be set up very soon. We're actually waiting for an acrylic structure that is going to go Ooh, into it. Oh, nice. Um, hoping to do a little bit of a sort of floating island type yeah, scale. Yeah, nice, nice. Um, but that's going to be sort of the first marine tank that I've set up and properly done in the shop. Yeah, cool. Um, so we'll see how that goes. It might so be it a, few, a few attempts, but we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> it's all part of the learning process and it's yeah. a good opportunity to showcase Cade up here in Brisbane, which you guys are probably one of the Cade specialists up this way um, in a, 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 yeah, an awesome range of tanks and uh, you guys live and breathe them and having a display set up. We really like them, yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I'm a big Cade, but Cade advocate and I, I, I just think the build quality is really great and the supplier is very easy to deal with. Big shout out to Adam, does yeah. great work. 100%. Now, you say that's gonna be your first marine display, but you do have some marine displays. We I have can some see... small marine displays. I can um... see two already. <laughs> so tell us about this display. You've got a uh, Waterbox Cube 20 there. Yes, Waterbox Cube 20, also really cool tanks. Um, pretty much everything you need to run them, bar maybe a lot. Um, and they're just, a, they're a good size. They, they fit into pretty much any house. Yeah. Anyone can fit a small tank. You Definitely. can do fresh water in it, you can do marine in it. And um, if you've got yeah, an apartment or you've got a huge mansion, you can still find a spot to fit yeah. this. Don't and need to know about sumps, they work off the back chamber. If you've got a lot of stairs to go up, that's yeah. an ideal tank. <laughs> it's it's light. One person can carry it. And they do um, come with these really nice looking cabinets. Well, you can buy these really nice cabinets yeah, to go with. I Probably the timber finish would not be my first choice. Yeah, right. Marine. I quite like this oak. I think it's nice. I like it on the fresh water. I think it matches, uh, yeah, matches okay. the fresh water. It does. Um, it does. This tank is not a water box cube, but it is on the uh, <laughs> cube 20 stand. It works. Um, it works. Yeah, so we've got, we've got the black clowns, we've got the big Magnifica anemone, and then there is a little sand goby that lives under that rock. I was hoping nice. he would come out, but <laughs> Try he's, the old he's quite trick. shy. A lot of us have talked about having a, uh, a NEM tank with just a pair of clowns and um, mm. yeah, having that right at the point of sale is <laughs> nicely done just to try and tempt those freshwater people oh, across. And, and it works. Like You would be surprised at how many freshwater people think that is really cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, I would not be surprised. <laughs> yeah, 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 true, true, true. You wouldn't be surprised, but... Um, but no, I can't imagine. Yeah, um, it's something to look at while you're getting your checkbook out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this one's running the super neat uh, Pixel mm. LED, which has got like the nice integrated stand there mm. with the power supply, all, all the leads all tucked in mm. and everything. So it, it matches the tank really well. Actually. It does. Yeah, yeah. It's a really sweet I, looking I, combo. I would recommend that combination. <laughs> <laughs> Here's one prepared earlier. Now, before we jump onto the other freshwater systems and also the marine uh, section, we've got one more marine system over here we've got to have a look at. It's the uh, Dymax drop-off tank. Yes. Uh, it is backwards. <laughs> That's the only way we could fit it. Fair um, enough. It works. But yeah, it's basically got its own little sump in here. It's yeah, got a little yeah. tiny protein skimmer in it. Um, Full on. That's your media. It does pull out the opposite direction, so I have to move a lot of stuff when I want to do that. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a little peninsula tank. Um, we've got a pair of Bangai Cardinals in there. It's super cool, um, yeah, you get some Bangos. This recorder up the top here is crazy it nice. It is quite cool. Yeah. Um, one of the staff actually brought that in and I nabbed it off him. <laughs> um, but yeah, those Bangos, they were in with a school of them and they just had the rest of them pinned up in the corner. So yep. they needed to be separated. And I mean, with any luck, we'll get some babies out of them. Yeah, um, definitely. There was a blue ring octopus that lived in here for a oh, while, wow. um, but it did happen to lay eggs oh. and uh, it didn't end well for the mother. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, now that it's the home. circle of life with octopus, unfortunately. It is, yep. it is. Um, they it have can't short live lives. forever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Live fast, die young. Yep, yep. Um, but yeah, so that's another one of our marine displays. Yeah, awesome. Um, Very nice. Seems to have a big one. All right. Now, there's lots more of the shop to go through, man. Where should we start? 
Uh, I mean, we could start here and we could walk around. Sounds good. Let's we'll, do it. We'll, we'll gloss over the fresh water a little bit. No, um, but go in as much detail as you like. It's our dry goods area um, or one of our dry goods areas. We've got our nice. food, um, all your medications and additives um, and heaters and more food. Um, Everything one would need to set up and or maintain a tank. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> or I would hope so. Anyway. That's the aim of your yeah. local fish store. You want to have everything <laughs> yeah. in one place, totally, one stop shop. Totally. Um, so we've sort of got our our fish sort of sectioned off into continents, basically. It, it sure. tends to make it a little bit easier when you're selecting fish or deciding yep. what can go with what. Um, there's so many different species of fish and obviously no one knows how everything goes together, <laughs> and especially if you're just starting. Um, it's probably one of the most commonly asked questions that we get is, can this live with this? Yes. Um, so at least having them in continents sort of makes it a little bit easier. Um, it's not to say that everything from the same continent can no, live together. No, of course not, because there's still, you know, there's still lots of food chains and things in, yeah, yeah, in each continent, 100%. but it is something that to a pure marine keeper, mm. it is something that when I see freshwater people talking about, you know, like not necessarily just biotopes, but you know, region yeah. specific tanks, yeah. It's just something you don't see in marine. No, but. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, <laughs> so it's, it's, it's super hard. intriguing. Um, yeah. Like uh, you say, you're intrigued by the marine and uh, getting, you know, familiar and bu building your skills in that area. I'm. I know about you know 0 0.2 percent of the uh, freshwater <laughs> world. So um, stuff like this is super interesting. We'll, we'll meet in the middle. You teach me a little on marine. I'll teach you a little bit on fresh. Uh, but yeah, so this is like our Asian rack. Yep. Um, Asia slash Southeast Asia. You got. Like a bit of China, a bit of everything. Sure. Um, but you may recognize some species. So I'll, I'll let you point it out, Sam. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll mispronounce them. Happy days. <laughs> um, but yeah, anything from like your Danios and white cloud minnows, uh, barbs. Barbs are a very popular Asian fish. Yes. You get like tiger barbs, rosy barbs. Oh, there's hundreds, there's here. <laughs> um, and you got like your gouramis. Gouramis are also another really popular aquarium yes. fish. And there is also metric shit tons of them so many of them yep, um, yep. like for instance your paradise garami and your flame garami and then you got honey garami you've got pearl garami lace garami yeah you name it there's a garami there's a garami yeah, um yeah. we've then got our sort of rack of slightly more sensitive stuff generally and sure. also stuff that doesn't like to be on the main system with all the same water. Okay, yep, um, yep. So some of these tanks are at different temperatures, some of them are at different pHs and sure. hardness and all that sort of thing. Um, but also just stuff that, you know, looks better in a sort of slightly scaped tank. Okay. Um, these tanks are the hardest to catch fish out of because they are <laughs> slightly scaped. The scaped, yeah, it's um, just going to add a level of complexity. Yeah, they tend to get a lot of duckweed in them, which is yeah. sort of inevitable. Um, but, yeah, I mean... There's some cool fish in here. There's some cool fish. I These guys up here some... got some crazy contrast to them. I like yeah. them. These are platies, actually. One of our customers brought them in, and they're just particularly nice platies. Yeah. Um, you've got, like, your gold rams. Um, yes. We got these little guys in yesterday. Uh, I've never had them in. They're the Aspidorus pelotus. Of course um, they are. Very similar to a Corydorus <laughs> catfish. Um, a little bit of medication in that tank, too. That's what those pills are. Yep, Not yep. feeding them pills. Uh, <laughs> And then you got, oh, you move over here and you've got sort of Central America slash South America yeah, um, yeah. with a couple of goldfish, which are, <laughs> honestly, they are the, the largest goldfish that I've ever seen. They're monsters. Um, they're, they're ginormous. I mean, the rest of the fish um, in the, on this wall here are pretty big, but they look small compared to those <laughs> yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah. Massive. Um, but yeah, anything from angelfish, flower horn, uh, blood parrots are always a popular yes. freshwater fish. They are a hybrid, a man-made fish. Yep. Um, Oscars, Central American cichlids, um, and then if you move over to here. What about the snakehead the, gudgeon? Is this something we can talk about or not? That's Australian, so we, you, can. You, we can talk about that. <laughs> um, not to be confused with an actual snakehead, um, <laughs> something that we're not allowed to have in Australia. Uh, but yeah, snakehead gudgeons are really cool. They're from far north Queensland, um, and they're just like a really, really tolerant fish. Like they can live in a stupidly broad range of yeah. water parameters they can live in like boiling hot water and freezing cold water um people use them for barramundi bait up yeah north. right <laughs> um, and i've heard people talk about them living in a bucket with no water for like hours and hours and hours full on um, i'm assuming it's fairly predatory though like 
it, to an extent, to an extent. I, I've actually fished for them in, in North Queensland and it's yep. like a bit of worm on a little float and you just flick it into a <laughs> tiny little creek where you can't see anything and they'll just smack yeah, it. Yeah, right. Like, um, very active fish. Yeah, they're very like, I guess, um, yeah, active with the way that they eat. <laughs> um, but yeah, cool fish, cool fish. Very cool um, fish. Not, probably not to be kept with like really tiny stuff. No, no, no it's going to fit in their mouth. It's chance it's going to eat it. Yeah, 90% yeah. of the fish the same. Even those goldfish yeah. will eat small fish. Of course. Um, this is sort of South America. So you've got like angelfish, tetras, Corydoras, um, a few cichlids. But yeah, it's probably one of our most popular areas. Yes. Um, tetras are ever popular and there's yep. hundreds and hundreds of species of them. Color, so movement, easy, exactly, exactly. cheap. And sort of no matter what you have in a community tank, you always probably have a school of tetras. Tetras, yeah. Um, yep. In freshwater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's your freshwater it's your, chromus. Yeah, basically, basically. Um, so there's some cool stuff in there. Um, I've got a tank full of guppies in here too. I mean, um, they're sort of more Central American and very, very domesticated, but... Um, it works. It works, it works. <laughs> um, then we move on to, I guess, African. Um, most of the fish on here are African. Uh, we've got anything from your Fahaka puffer, little freshwater puffer species. Yeah, right. Now these guys, pretty crazy and fairly unique. They are, they are. Yeah, you, you don't see them every day. Um, they do grow, I think, to about 40 centimeter. Oh, wow. Notoriously aggressive as well. So it's yeah, sort okay. of the kind of fish that you just have in a tank on its, it's own. A, yeah, it's a um, single species. Yeah, or you have it with some tetras or barbs or something that's fast enough that he can't really Oh, catch. okay. I thought you were going to say yeah. sacrificial then, but no. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> something I mean, fast enough. Yeah, you're not putting your $100 tetras yeah, in there. Of course, yeah, yeah, of course, of um, course. And then, yeah, you got like, Mala uh, sorry, Tanganyikan cichlids, Malawi cichlids, and then a bit of an assortment. Um, that's sort of, yeah, there's a few lakes in Africa that have very endemic native species. Yes. Um, and then you also get like your riverine African species that live in sort of like the Congo and that sort of thing. Um, riverine species really interest me because they're all little tiny weird stuff, but they're not readily available in Australia. Yeah, okay. And I would imagine being from the Congo, it's probably quite difficult to <laughs> actually get them. Quite a journey. Um, yeah, it is quite yeah. a journey in, from a war-torn country. Yes. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's our Africans. Um, <laughs> this is sort of native fish slash a bit of whatever. It started off as being native, but a lot of other stuff's been mixed in. Like you got another puffer here. Um, yeah. You got some Bashirs, like this guy here. Um, yeah. But what, like, what the hell even is that, man? That's a crazy looking fish. That's, the, is this, this guy here? That's that one. That's yeah, how you yeah. pronounce it, the Bashir? Yeah, I think I, I say Bashir. They're a really like prehistoric fish. Yeah, and okay. They, to me, they're like a intermediary between a fish and like a land animal. Yeah, yeah, um, it has that sort of look to it, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, they have yeah. a lung, like they have a really primitive lung. Yeah, wow. Um, and there was actually a study done on them, I think in the US, where they raised them from very young, actually out of water, but in wow. like 100% humidity. And yeah. they just, they learnt to like walk around on land. <laughs> they just forced evolution basically basically and and Full to me on. that'd be that would have been like one of the first sort of things that you know oh i've got a lot i can actually walk up <laughs> on land if i'm out of water for a little bit and i don't dry out you know i can be all right i can just <laughs> over his shoulder and went see you later yeah, suckers <laughs> hunt a little rat in the bushes and then go back to the water crazy um, they're very cool um we love them there's heaps of different species of them and yep, we yep. try to get as many as we can and i just saw in the back corner there's a bigger one in this tank too yeah uh, there is here there's an albino one or an albino yeah, right. one. Um, and then there's also a different species. Oh, is that him hiding in? Sitting uh, on the oh, side yeah, yeah. there. That's called a tiger bashir. Right. Um, he's a little short body. He's like missing a few vertebrae, that guy. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. We Did got, a little too much walking on land. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably not. I'd be doing a bit of waddling though. Um, this is sort of just our like, our bigger display for freshwater. Yeah. We don't have, apart from the river tank, we don't have giant freshwater displays. Yes. Um, but you got stuff like uh, albino pyrocephalus. Those things, they, they yeah. almost glow. They are yeah, when they're, such a strange... They've only been in there for a couple of days. When they actually like settle and they fully color up, their head is like hot, hot red. Yeah, um, wow. And their tail gets that full, full red stripes. Um, so they're... Yeah, beautiful fish. Uh, then you've obviously got your stingrays, which yeah. some marine people might know about. We, we, um, we can partially relate to stingrays, but <laughs> yeah. I've got to be honest, the freshwater rays, are, they're kind of where it's at. Like, they are, they are. I, I think, 
I do think stuff like blue spot rays maybe get a bad rap and, and yep. uh, like they can be a good aquarium fish, but I think the way that they get into the industry is yeah. often a bit too rough on them. Yep. And then yep. uh, there's a lot of people that have not had success with them just due to that. Um, freshwater rays are all bred in Australia. And so they're all sort of captive from the moment yep. they're born. Yep. Um, we tend not to like to get them too small, like okay. too young, because they are very fragile when they're young. Yes. Okay. Um, but you know, at this sort of size, this is still very young for them. They, you know, adult female grow to a meter wide. Oh wow! Um, so yeah, they're a, they're they're a big fish. Um, they're they're, they're an animal that you you know you're like you, you need, don't just you, you don't just plonk it in a tank. You, you, <laughs> yeah. you build a habitat for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You put yeah. them in a big pond or something along those lines. Yeah. Wow. Um, you've also got a few different species of eel, or technically not an eel, but we call them eels. Um, you got a oh yeah, so this is a gold fire eel. Yes. Um, and then you got a tire track eel. They a tire to, track eel. Yeah. I, Most glamorous of names. We can get some B-roll later. I'll, I'll get him to come out, but he's got basically looks like he's been driven over by a car. Um, he's, and where, he's, whereabouts he's, is he found in Australia uh, or overseas? No, this is Southeast Asia. Southeast Asia. Um, okay. I don't know exactly what country. I would imagine maybe Cambodia sort of area. Right. Right. Um, the gold one is actually a color mutation, so generally they're just like a black fish. Okay. Um, that is very rare in Australia. Yeah, okay. um, I would imagine there's probably five or so in the country. And I mean, with um, your with your background in the freshwater scene, I mean, th that is w what you've got the following and reputation for is the very rare, unusual, unusual stuff. crazy yeah. freshwater it, stuff. It just, I guess because it started off as a hobby and it started off as something that it was like, almost like Pokemon, you know? Like, you, you gotta catch them all. Um, and I'd been doing it. I've been it's doing too it many, man. I, oh, Just like Pokemon, they keep releasing new seasons. <laughs> yeah. like. See, Marine, that's why I'm so excited about Marine, because it's just a whole new world yeah. that I haven't done. You've just found and a spin-off show. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. It's like it's like I've just found a, a kitty of stuff that I've never heard of. Um, but yeah, it, it, because I've been doing it since I was five years old, it's, yes. uh, I felt like I had seen everything and kept everything. And so I... I just really went looking, I guess, and, and tried to find the most unusual stuff that we possibly could, um, which sure. is now sort of trickling over into the marine side. Yeah, yeah. Um, in terms of getting some interesting stuff. Getting stuff there, definitely. Um, you got some fairly unique marine stuff there. We'll check out shortly. Yeah, we'll shortly. Have a look in a minute. On, on the way through, though, we've got to mention this uh, plant system here. Yeah. So This is a sail tank, but um, yes. damn, that could be a display. It's beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, so plants plants are a, a really actually quite large part of our business. Yes. Um, we, I guess, try and specialize in plants a little bit. Sure. And, and aquascaping is so popular these days that uh, this tank honestly is probably our most profitable tank. Yeah, it's okay. it's yep. the tank that we we almost completely clear it, I would say, once a week. And we, wow. have, yeah, we right. do at least one to two orders of plants every week. Wow. Um, and, you know, we're getting like a hundred stems and you know, a, a lot at a time. No wonder um, you have it looking so beautiful then. Yeah, we. it actually used to be a coral system and Sebastian, the previous owner, had it as a coral tank. So that's why it has uh, XR30s on it. But I think these are going to be, are they a freshwater? No, no they, they, they are, are legit marine yeah. XR30s yeah. just with a fairly white spectrum put in them. Yes, um, and they actually grow plants really they well. They look great, yeah, um, yeah. But you would hope so for a light that is, you know, $1,200 or so. A few dollars, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I guess photosynthesis is photosynthesis. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> we, we do run CO2 on this as well. Um, we just find when we're getting fish, uh, sorry, when we're getting plants shipped to us and they're coming in a, a cardboard box wrapped in wet newspaper, they yeah. get a little bit bruised and they get a little bit damaged. Yes. And with CO2 running, they perk up a lot quicker. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. we, all of these plants went in yesterday and they're already sort of facing the top. Oh man, they look incredible. Yeah, within a couple of days, they'll actually be growing. Um, yeah. And a lot of these before they even sell, they'll probably reach the surface. So stem plants grow very quickly. Okay. Um, okay. In the middle, we've sort of got like some colonies of plants that we're growing out just because a lot of them are sort of harder to get. So sure. with this sort of stuff, we can take cuttings of them and just sell people a cutting. Um, I love it. It's so yeah. similar to the marine side of things where, you know, you've got like your display tank with uh, like some mother colonies yeah. and you just take frags off it. Exactly. This, this is the leafy version of yeah. that. And uh, I tell you what, how stunning is it? Look at these, uh, 
these little clusters of yeah that's a mosaic floating plant or so so beautiful they're awesome they're really cool. yeah um, really really pretty <laughs> yeah definitely Super um, cool. Now we, we should keep walking, otherwise you're going to convert me to a freshwater guy if I, <laughs> I keep looking we can at those do plants. That by, the, by the end of the day, <laughs> um, this is like a guppy and shrimp rack. Um, it sort of just has all our really nano stuff and stuff that can't compete well with bigger stuff, sure. um, or would go down our overflows in our main system. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, lots of different types of cherry shrimp. We get crystal shrimp, Bloody Marys, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. endless guppies. Like these guys are particularly oh, nice. Wow, yeah, yeah. Silverados, yeah. They're, um, panda guppies. Very pretty small fish. Yeah. yeah. It, this is another area that uh, nano tanks, I guess, as people are moving into smaller houses and that sort of thing, yes. nano tanks are really taking off. Yeah. And people want interesting little nano fish. They don't For just sure. want a tank with guppies or. You know. Well, the thing with nano is it's uh, it's either a good first tank, mm. as as in well, not necessarily care wise and whatnot, but just as in like outlay and getting yeah. it across the line with all members of the household <laughs> and also if you've already got a tank adding an extra nano is not that hard so i, I no. can see it they'd be popular the, for that reason the multiple tanks <laughs> it does yeah, yeah nice um, but no nano nano is really popular and it's uh, it's really cool they, there is a lot of really cool tiny little oh, fish some stunners um, out there yeah 100 yeah, yeah. um Brilliant. here we got the goldfish area Everyone's seen goldfish. I won't really <laughs> go too much into that. You've got like your guppies, mollies, platies, sword tails, goldfish. Uh, maybe you can get some B-roll of that later, but we all know what a goldfish is. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll walk you out into our We'll go to area. the affectionately named marine room. <laughs> uh, formerly known as the marine garage. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so uh, this is our coral tank, coral system. Um, yeah. We do also keep some fish in here. Yes. Um, we got here our sort of predatory marine tank. Sure. Um, it is just rock at the moment, just for ease of cleaning and, you know, if we have to treat with medication, of which course. we do every now and then, um, with a very highly aggressive Sohal tank. <laughs> that's, um, that's not unusual for a Sohal at all. No, no, it's not. <laughs> um, we took him from a customer because he was very aggressive and yes. he has shown to be very aggressive. <laughs> He's lived up to that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then we got a Cade that's uh, due to be delivered. Another Cade going um, out the door. Awesome. Another Cade going out next week, hopefully. Um, and then this is sort of our small and yet kind of cool fish rack. Um, yeah, you've got some cool marine fish in here. We do, we do. Um, what do we have? We've got Scopaz Tang, Candy Stripe Hog. Yeah, I love the Candy tangs. Stripe Hogs. Such a very cute sized scope as in there too like yes. this is like the same size if not smaller than the uh, pajama cardinals yeah yeah literally <laughs> I, I i love scope as i really really like them and and you'll see that through the tanks because we've got about scope as are such an awesome fish for any tank i mean they get uh a, not a bad rap but they get undersold i guess mm. people think they're a brown fish but when you look closely fish. the uh the patterns the fade i mean the style at the moment is to go, well, it was, I'm a bit slow on fashions, but they have the, the hair fade and that's literally a swimming hair fade. Like, <laughs> they're beautiful fish, super easy to keep, yep. cheap. Yep. Um, they tick all the boxes. They, they also, they seem to change color a little bit, like, yep. like by mood. And yeah, obviously yeah. a lot of fish do that, but you know, I've seen them go jet black and then yes. they'll sort of go very light. Um, but yeah, there's a slightly bigger one in there. Definitely, yeah, you got um, a bigger guy there. Got a nice uh, Moorish idol in there as well. Yeah. And the, the file fin is a orange fantail file fish. It yeah, is. Yeah. I, that's the first one of those we've had, and that's the first one I've seen. That Moorish yeah. idol wants to show off, dude. Yeah, yeah, the Moorish <laughs> idol's like, oh, you've got a camera. Yeah. <laughs> and then what's, what's this guy hiding over in the back that corner here? Is a. I believe to be a six line soapfish. Six um, line soapfish. Soapfish, yeah, yeah. I find soapfish really interesting, um, but a lot of people are a bit afraid to keep them because they can, when extremely stressed, release a toxin that is obviously not ideal to have in your reef tank. It's soap like, I'm um, assuming. Yeah, it's, it sort of suds <laughs> up, it foams up. Um, okay, it's just like it's a defense mechanism? Yeah, or? yeah, yeah okay. basically. It's, it's so if something's got him in their mouth, yeah, they're gonna right. get poison and spit them out. Yep. Essentially, makes sense. Um, does make people a little bit wary of them. Yes, we've had him for oh, 
at least six months and I've never seen him even think never about it. Never seen one single sud. No, I, I would imagine he would need to be in the mouth of something yeah, or, yeah, yeah. or really getting nailed to actually For have sure. that happen. Um, like even when you're netting him and stuff, it's not even a worry. Still nothing, yeah, okay. And um, I mean, he's in there with the Moorish that was, I mean, we just saw the Moorish <laughs> flare up for the camera and the soap wasn't bothered at all. Yeah, he's more interested in the small damsels in the tank next door. <laughs> um, I think quite closely related to gropers. Um, you can see that, yeah, he looks yeah, like a type of groper. he's got the groper head. Definitely. Um, here we've got a little clown that's on vacation here. We're minding him for someone. Nice, nice. Um, and a little batfish. He's a super small batfish, isn't it? Yeah, very, very small. Um, Beautiful colors. You may notice a few spots on him, but that's all right. He is being medicated. Uh, he's just gone into the tank last night, I think you were saying. So yeah, like, yeah. Hasn't been there long. Um, and then you got a bunch of damsels, um, and that's it for that tank. Nice, uh, nice. Go down, and we've got some... Got a couple of treasures cardinals. on this system. Yeah, we've got the gem tank. Gem tank's only been in there since yesterday as well. Um, we got that in for a customer. It's a very, very nice little fish. Beautiful fish. And this guy... Bigger was just smashing pellets yeah. as soon as you put him in the you tank he was yeah, he yeah, was yeah. eating away and honestly straight away um to me that's sort of the sign of like a happy healthy fish is when they just go for food as soon as you get them yeah um, yeah there's not a lot of fish that will just eat eat a pellets yeah or yeah. even eat in a bucket while you're acclimating yeah. like, that's that always <laughs> always a me. good sign yeah um, and a flame angel in there too and some fire fish and flame angels have been so popular of late i mean that bright <laughs> They're beautiful. Red, um, yellow with a hint of blue in there. It's um, and, and hard to argue And what you were saying with. before, they are tough, tough yeah. angels as well. Um, Super tough, yeah. And a, and a small species. Most dwarf well. angels I find to be pretty hardy. Like the only thing they're hard on is your coral. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and each other, they, they yeah. don't play so well with other dwarf angels. But, but they get along fine with gem tanks. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I'm sure you could uh, hook us up with a deal on the two. But, <laughs> no um, worries. <laughs> Send them both home with you. Beautiful, beautiful fish. And this is a pretty crazy looking uh, clownfish yeah, in there too. Yeah, that's a little black storm. Um, yeah, nice. That is from Coastal Clownfish. Oh, nice. Yeah, um, Matt and Jade do great yeah, work up there. They produce some really, really nice clowns. Um, and yeah, that is one of them. Definitely. Um, what yeah. about these? Oh yeah, if you can see the little eels, <laughs> there's a few little snowflake mores. Uh, Tiny little snowflake mores. Yeah, there's, there's about five of them in there, but they do do a good job of hiding. Um, maybe we'll, we'll try and get them out and put a bit of food in later I'll, for them. And I'll get pop them some B-roll on screen of them, but they are absolutely tiny. We're talking like uh, pencil size. Yeah, I'd say what, maybe 10, 15 centimeters. Yeah, wow. Um, small fish. Uh, then you got our clowns. These are just some Miss Bar Perculas that we got in yesterday. Nice, um, nice. And a little platinum. Um, then we got a, a plethora of royal grammars. No shortage <laughs> royal grammars here. Yeah. Super cool fish though. Um, yeah. Super peaceful, unlike their uh, look alike in their royal dotty back. Yeah. The grammar is super peaceful. We, we are sort of debating as to whether to put them all in the same tank. Yep, yep. Um, I've opted for the safe route, <laughs> um, but we might we might give it a crack while we're here to watch them and make sure that it goes okay. They're they're not a huge swimmer anyway. Like they they're not a fish that paces up and down the tank, so they'll probably be pretty happy in those size jars for like the weekend. And then hopefully, I mean, hopefully you sell we should all sell of them. Few. Yeah, but if, if not all of them, if you've yeah, only yeah. got a handful left, I reckon <laughs> they'll be fine going in the tank together. But um, in I'll the meantime, they're just there, ready for quick sale. Yeah. There. yeah, we can just pull a container out and give it to you right in your hand. And it makes it very easy it. for the customer to pick the specific yeah, yeah. grammar they want exactly, without them, exactly. you know, playing switcheroo on you. Um, we've also got a hyper aggressive pair of clowns in here. They actually made me bleed yesterday. <laughs> um, These are a fairly mature pair. Are they did yeah. they come from a? They did. They came out of someone's tank, yep, one of our yep. customers, um, because they were killing his other uh, clowns, even <laughs> even in a, a four foot tank. Wow. Um, but yeah, I mean, clowns tend to do that when they pair up. Yeah, it's not unusual for clowns to draw yeah. blood when they want to. They can be angry little <laughs> buggers like that. Um, then we've got down here, a bit of a cluster of algae. Um, yeah, yeah. A calerpa, bit of uh, hair algae. Um, nice Spanish hog in there too, yeah. just grazing away. That's Such a beautiful thing. fish. I, I think a lot of the fish in there, there is actually a few fish in there. <laughs> not, not that it looks like it. Um, but they do tend to like picking through the algae yeah. and, and hiding in it. There's a Absolutely. little, there's a little devil fish in there, um, and he comes out for about 
five milliseconds when I put food in and he just darts out, grabs a pellet and darts back. Well, even the big scopas there, it's a decent yeah. sized scopa. It just came out of them. nowhere and then disappeared <laughs> yeah. again. Like there's a, there's a bright yellow angel in there as well. Yeah, wow. Looks like it's coming up. Oh, there it is. Yep, yep. Yeah, he's only been in there since yesterday too. Yeah, that's a nice little introductory tank for them to just yeah. get their bearings out of... Um, out of the ocean and into captivity and just have somewhere to hide and settle in. It's like a little rock pool, basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, in here, we've got what we actually bought as a... Do you, know, remember, do you remember what we bought it as? A snake? It was like a... Yeah. We, we bought it as something else from a supplier and it arrived and it is not what we bought it as. Um, but it's called an enigmatic dwarf moray eel. Ah. Um, he's actually, I'll lift up the rock, he is actually quite a cool fish. The old lucky dip eel, hey? Yeah. <laughs> we got lucky in that he's not a particularly aggressive eel. Yeah, he's beautiful. Um, yeah, he's, he's just he's just nice and shouldn't grow too massive. And there's his uh, friend, the Nasaria snail. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I tend to not try and fight the algae that much in these no, tanks. No, no, it gives um, the fish something to graze away at. Yeah, maybe embrace it a little bit. Yeah. Um, this is an example of what can go wrong when you embrace the algae a little <laughs> bit too much. Um, that's a little bit overdue for a clean, but it does have a, a nice little um, humu, humu trigger. Beautiful. Yeah, who, who lives with a scopaz and yet tries to fight the scopaz in the tank next door. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the one scopaz club. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much this room. I, we can have a look in the coral tank. You said that's pretty much all in this room, but <laughs> look, 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 yeah, you're yeah. leaving the piece to the resistance. Maybe, maybe, okay, so. You've got lots in this system here to uh, cover. This is our coral system. A uh, little bit of everything in here. We try and cater to people that want a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Um, we buy a lot of our frags from Monsoon. Yep. Um, we went to Monsoon, David, me, and Dylan uh, a couple of weeks ago. Nice. And Juno gave us the tour. And we brought a box of corals home. Happy birthday, um, Juno. Yeah. Is it a birthday? It was mm, a couple of days ago, yeah. Happy birthday, Juno. <laughs> <laughs> we'll send her up some corals and tell that's what she'd love. Um, and yeah, we've also got a few fish in here. So yeah, you've got like a ringtail tang in here. He actually was living with the Sohal, but the Sohal decided that he really didn't like him. Um, there's another little Scopaz. We went a bit Scopaz crazy, so I didn't have any other tanks for him to go in. Um, obviously you're Australian stripey Definitely. and um, that's probably kind of cool to a lot of marine people the big Adonis yeah <laughs> uh, big collection of Adonis yeah there. they're actually, a beautiful zoa they are they are they're super beautiful I think that's going to go into our arcade um, in here we've got got some nice treasures fish. in here yeah yeah this clam I actually got from Reeftopia on their opening day oh nice yep um, yep he's doing really, really well he will also probably go into the cave. Beautiful croquet, um, yeah. Then you got a little rabbit fish, some stripies, a uh, blue tang with <laughs> a receding hairline, as you said. Yeah, this, this blue tang made me laugh when I saw him because he, he literally, and I, I said he looks like the old, uh, like Dory's father, yeah. and then you pointed up here. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, oh, okay, I'm clearly not the first to notice yeah. that because that's exactly what he looks like. Um, and there's also actually a, a powder black cross powder blue tang in yeah, here Yeah, okay, well, wow. Um, which is a, a naturally occurring hybrid. Uh, he's a really nice fish. Yeah, he always shifts between black and blue. Yeah, he fully fully changes colour. Yeah, um, but yeah crazy. He's, he's nice. Uh, in and then here, you, you've got, I mean, we, you don't want to skip past the corals okay, too quickly. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you can talk about the corals. you got some nice Duncan frags here, some gold torches, mm -hmm. some big hammer, uh, big, big heads of hammer back mm -hmm. there. Crazy nice uh, bubble in the back. A couple of these hammer frags here, really, really nice. Nice reverse, nice model. Some monsoon specials. Yeah, this this one back here, I'll get some top-down footage of it with mm. its, it's like a tri-color hammer, which I have seen in the in the tubs at Monsoon yep, yep. and um, <laughs> drooled over them for quite a while, probably dropping their salinity. Got some nice scully <laughs> frags, um, cyanaria frags, big, big recordia in there, a few different types of recordia. Nice Monty back there. And these big red morphs, <laughs> look at the size of them. <laughs> they're, they're a little bit shrunk. They're normally a little bit really? bigger Really, yeah, that. yeah. <laughs> they're still fairly early. The lights have only been on for a little while, yeah, but yeah. Um, they're already stretching for the um, sky, which is cool. Cool. Um, next coral tank. I'll talk about the fish. So we got a- Go for it. We got a magnificent fox face. Yes. Uh, if he will come out, I might try and give him a bit of food. 
Um, we got a yellow tang, uh, decent sized yellow tang. It actually was purchased from Atlas Aquarium from one of the previous owners. Classic. And the customer was moving away and decided to shut his tank down. And so we purchased him back. Nice. Um, and he's a great fish. He's really no, resilient. He looks nice and healthy. Yeah, I'm a good I'm color, a good fan. size. I mean, you know, if you go back a few years, I probably wouldn't even be talking about it. Yeah, yeah, I know. yeah. That's a yellow tank. I, I actually saw in the last Atlas video when you're filming the tanks, there's like three or four of them in the yeah. shop, and you just gloss over them, like, yep, yeah, exactly, that's a yeah. Because I did actually come. Like, it was a different address. Yeah. About four years ago, I came to Atlas Aquarium. It was um, just around the corner. Just around the corner. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Same um, sort of area, but um, yeah, I can imagine back then, <laughs> yellow tangs would have been yeah, great. Dime a dozen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> I mean, totally. just like a, you know, just a basic oki clown. Be like, yep, <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, also, some nice corals in here. Definitely. Um, really nice scullies. Good blastos. Um, where our plan for the cage out the front is to do large amounts of aquapora. Yeah. Nice. Um, so we're sort of fine tuning our keeping of them to make sure that we got the process down. Well. Yeah, yeah exactly, well, that is exactly. a section of the hobby that is fairly new to you. And mm, I always say it's best to, you know, know your strengths, know your weaknesses and <laughs> work on your weaknesses. And, and I would say that it's no longer a weakness if you've got SBS frags to um, encrust completely over the tile like that. Some would call you an SBS master. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't toot my own horn. But yeah. um, I love that. Before before we go on, I love this big helio back there too. Yeah, big, that's, big size helio. That's David's personal coral. Yeah, he's, nice. He's been asked about many times to sell and refuses it's a every time. Big beast. And then this, are these Acan frags here. I'll get a top down of those. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah. they got every color of the rainbow in they there. They are really nice. We got them uh, at our last monsoon trip. Yeah, nice. Yeah, um, they're the sort of piece when you see in person, you can't leave them there. Yes. <laughs> um, and then, excuse the bubbling in here. It's no, a it's a top good. up, but. Uh, yeah, this is sort of the most exciting new acquisitions of Atlas Aquarium. What's hiding in back um, here? If you can get some good footage of them. <laughs> I can see a couple of juvenile yellow tangs. And then one of these other ones that look like yellow tangs, but they're not. So those happen to be yurple tangs. Yurples. Uh, yeah, I'm guessing from the name, that means that they've got a little bit of yellow tang in them, a little bit of purple tang in them. They do, they do. They've got approximately 50% yellow tang and 50% purple <laughs> tang in them. Um, these are captive bred. Um, they're a captive bred hybrid. And to my knowledge, they are the only two in Australia. Yeah, crazy nice. Um, they would suit the high-end client. Um, Definitely. <laughs> yeah, um, but they are something that's really cool and extremely unique. It's extremely um, unique. And I've got to say, a lot of the time, uh, my, my showpiece fish in my tank is a hybrid. Mm. And I chose that because the two parts of the hybrid actually work really well together. What is it? I've got a, a, a tiger pike angel, which is half lemon oh, peel, yeah. half ebly with the orange stripes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of the time when you see hybrids, for whatever reason, they end up with like the raw end of both fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, why? Yeah, yeah. yeah These totally. yurples, man, you've got purple and yellow on yeah. them. It's like a purple body with yellow fins. They're unique. They're, they're just unique. crazy, crazy yeah. nice. And they're only babies. They're going to... Um, grow out and uh, just look even better as they settle in and, and get bigger. But yeah, and look at them eating the pellets. These were another one that, I mean, I know you were saying before that uh, you spent a little bit of time acclimating these guys just because they're a <laughs> fairly expensive and unique fish and you didn't want to be known as the person who killed the exactly, Europeans. Exactly, exactly. Um, um, so they're in the bucket for a while and you managed to- They're in the bucket to... for five hours. Um, <laughs> and we were very, very slowly drip acclimating them. Um, nice. And testing the salinity and testing the temperature and just making sure that we could get it exactly right um being in there for five hours i did try and feed them a little bit and yep. i was amazed that they actually were eating pellets in the bucket eating pellets in the bucket just being um, unbagged and off they go yeah, yeah tough fish and i guess that's what you get with captive bread fish. yeah exactly um, much like captive spawned and aquaculture corals yeah. it's just generally more resilient and it's I mean, been it's in a captive environment for, removes a massive stress point from their lifespan yeah. so you know it, it makes 100%. sense i and i would love to see more captive bread species available absolutely in the, in yeah industry. it's something that i mean with your experience um and, and knowledge in the freshwater scene it's something that freshwater absolutely puts marine to shame mm. in mm. um we're not too bad on the coral side of things although yeah. there's pro equally or probably not equally probably 
100 times more people um, <laughs> aquaculturing plants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, fish-wise, marine could not even hold a candle to what they're doing in the freshwater world. Yeah. So it's definitely a space where we can grow and improve. I mean, realistically, it's obviously a lot easier to breed your freshwater fish. Um, but I do think that more people should be trying to breed. At some point fish. in time, it would have been difficult to breed these freshwater oh, fish as well. It's only easy, so, yeah. I'll, I'll use, you know, rabbit ears here, easy, <laughs> because people do it and it's considered common. Like sometimes uh, people say that a height but heart bypass is an easy operation now. <laughs> it's not, it's ridiculously complicated. It's, it's just, just they do easier. it every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hopefully we can get marine captive breeding to that stage at some point in the future yeah i mean it, it just it even takes out the the risk of disease basically you know yeah. when you're when you're raising them in a sterile environment you just can't really exactly yep yep um, so it's yeah i if these fish had happened to be wild caught i probably wouldn't have taken the gamble i suppose sure. and then sure. just the fact that they have just been raised on pellets their yeah, whole life yeah. it's it's i don't know they're 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 tame they're domestic <laughs> <laughs> no, they're great and from the point of this video being taken ha, ha, they were put in the tank yesterday was it no 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 they've been here for about a week okay about a yeah. week and they're still settling um, quite nicely you they are they around there the yurples we are under the impression that they've actually grown a little bit in a week yeah um, okay because we are feeding them <laughs> like four to five times a day <laughs> they've eaten twenty dollars um, worth of pellet yeah yeah pretty much pretty much um there is one of the the very smallest yellow i am considering pulling out because he's definitely getting the the uh, brunt of the aggression yes, yep, between yep. them um but no the three of them seem to be doing really well and um they are available for purchase. Okay, well, if you want to be one of, well, not one of, if you want to be the first person in Australia to have a yurple or a baby captive yellow tank, mm, mm. then you know where to go. Come and see Finn and the team here at Atlas Aquariums. And, uh, Please, even if you just want to come and have a look. Come have a look, yeah, yeah. exactly. And I will say that I've seen them in person. They are quite a striking fish. Mm. Um, definitely, yeah. Unique. Yeah, yeah, the, like I mentioned before, the hybrid part is, it's evident. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, totally, totally. Um, Zebrasoma in general, we're a big fan of Zebrasoma. They're yep. just tough, tough fish and beautiful fish. And there's Definitely. a range of different colors to choose from. And um, I hope to have every Zebrasoma species at some <laughs> point in the shop. Um, which, you know, we're on our way. Definitely on your way, yeah. Well, you're already a few steps ahead of others. I mean, you've got gems. Oh, there's even a Tamini in there. Yeah. Um, Tamini, gems, you've got purples, you've got no shortage of scopas. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, purples, I should say. You've got yellows of various sizes. So no, it's all coming together. But um, I think it's a really cool uh, journey that you're on. I mean, uh, it, it's um, it, your freshwater knowledge is almost to the level of intimidating it's 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 incredible the amount of knowledge and experience you have in freshwater and seeing you uh now replicate well I, you're well past dipping your toe you're replicating the steps sure there's still more steps to go but um what you've been able to do here with your marine section is really really cool and um I'd highly encourage anyone in the area to come and visit and whether you're a freshwater person that's interested in marine or if you're a marine person that wants to see simply the best of what's available in freshwater as well as picking up your marine needs then this is the shop to come yeah please we can help with anything <laughs> <laughs> nicely done thank you all right guys there you have it that is the interview with finn and the tour of atlas aquarium what an incredible store like i touched on even an old salty reefer like myself really got a kick out of some of the freshwater things in store there and i imagine that some of the freshwater people that head in store would also get a kick out of all of the marine things they've got there and that's before we even mention the captive bred yellow tangs which for my international viewers is not something we find in australia all that often and the first in the country of the yurple tang a super super cool hybrid that has all of that beautiful pattern that the purple tang has with the splashes of purple and yellow on it crazy nice fish and I encourage anyone who is remotely in the area of Atlas Aquarium 
head in there quick smart. Not necessarily to buy them because they are a, potentially a fairly high end fish, but at least to check them out and have a look around the shop because Finna Marina have done an incredible job there. And I can also say, I didn't get a chance to show it on the video because it's still under construction. And well, you can probably see how long this video is gone for by this point in time, but Finn is also expanding outdoors into some pond section, which he plans at this stage at least to also include a marine pond in this uh, big tank that he's got out the back there. Well, out the front actually, which is something that uh, will just continue the theme that Atlas Aquarium have of just being something that has something a little bit different that other stores are not doing. So I cannot wait to come back up and see how Finn and Marina are going with their marine pond as well as just the freshwater ponds they do because if it's anything remotely like that river tank, it's going to be an absolute showstopper. But I should wrap the video up there. Before I do, I just want to give a massive shout out to Finn and Marina. Thank you so much for your hospitality and bringing me up to check out your store and get the opportunity to see the first of their kind, these Uopal tanks here in Australia. Truly, truly blessed to get the opportunity, so thank you very much. And likewise, anyone who's watching this video, if you are in the area, or if it's not too far of a drive, I highly recommend you head in, support those who are supporting this channel. Even if you're not in the area and you are interested in being one of the first people in the country to have one of those Uopal tanks, reach out to Finn via his uh, website or the Facebook page and just inquire there. We did talk about the possibility of airport to airport, so these things can be made available anywhere in the country, as long as that suits both ends of the uh, deal. So please do reach out to Finn if you would like to get your hands on one of those to die for Uopal tanks. Anyway, guys, I should probably wrap things up there. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. And last but not least, please put any words of encouragement into the section, comment section down below for uh, Finn or myself. I do personally read each and every one of them there. So it is the best way to get hold of me. Anyway, guys, till next time, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe and keep briefing. Cheers, bye.